This morning's first session is how to consistently create valuable content that drives business results with John Waddy. He is the founder and CEO of 262 Marketing. He has a bachelor's degree in marketing from Georgia State University and a master's of science and technology management from Mercer University. He began his career with IBM and MSL Atlanta before launching his own marketing agency, 262 Marketing. And they provide digital marketing services to small and large businesses, including B2B, B2C, and e-commerce. He is a married father of three kids, and he's a native of Atlanta, an avid golfer, and an evil scout, which is interesting. Yay, my dad would have killed me if I didn't do that. Thank you. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so this, we only have a few folks, so I'd like this to be conversational. You're welcome to raise your hand, ask questions. If you have some experience that you think is relevant that you want to share, please do. There's a, a few of us in the room that we can just talk, you know, and you don't have to listen to me mutter on unless, you know, you feel like you, you want to add something. So my company is 262 Marketing. It's named after a marathon. Um, started it in 2001 out of my condo, cold calling hotels and resorts. Hey, there's this thing called Overture that does paid search marketing. Do you want to do pay-per-click? And we had to tell them what it was and how it worked and all that stuff. And now our little agency has become all these things. It's mostly SEO and paid search. Occasionally we do web design and branding and things like that. Um, having been in business for 15 years, we've had some really cool clients. Um, our you know, biggest one, probably Home Depot, was over six years. And we, all we did was SEO their pages. They add 9,000 products a month, and we optimize the page to rank well in Google. So um, it's been fun. Social media is obviously one of the things we do. Um, so real quick, how many people work in an agency? How many people are clients that are in charge of social media? And how many people are students? Okay, so we have kind of a 50-50 split. Um, so my view, obviously, is the client view. Um, so I've probably worked with 400 clients in 15 years. And 10% of them are good at, at social media. When I started working with Home Depot five years ago, they had a one-person social media department pretty hard to believe. Five years ago was not that long ago. Um, so they, they, they've obviously gotten a little better and, and it was kind of a turf war. Um, was it PR? Was it digital? Was it marketing? You know, and that's what happens in big companies. In smaller companies, you know, it, it's, it's a little different. Um, so real quickly, you know, I looked up types of social media because, you know, there's different types, right? And this little graphic I found gave me eight things, they call it. I don't know if a lot of us go on discussion forums anymore unless you're a webmaster and you're trying to find some you know, tools or WordPress stuff. Maybe you guys do. Um, but I think for me, social media is a lot about content amplification. So having a Facebook page does not mean you're in social media. Uh, you have to have interesting content that people engage with. So social media to me has kind of plugged itself under content marketing where you've identified an audience that has a problem or a need and you're creating content to engage with them, create a conversation with them, um, get them to learn about your brand, get them to trust you for information that may not just be about yourself but is about... Uh, a bigger picture than the product, right? Because a lot of people, you know, we released 4.1 today and it, it does this and this. And the next thing is we started a little application that does this. And people really want to learn about more than just what you do. They want to learn about a bigger picture. So the, the, the benefits of social media marketing, you know, customer engagement, um, direct customer communications, feedback, learning customer preferences, I think the real benefit of social media is getting to know your customers' needs better. Um, if you ask Comcast, they've learned a lot about their customers. Um, they don't do anything right. Um, and, and they're like the poster child of doing a better job of social media to improve customer service, da-da-da-da. Um, what do they actually achieve that? 
is kind of the secret to business, right? It's not what you say you do, it's what you actually deliver. And I, I watched this great movie, if you guys are into marketing, it's on iTunes. It's called The Naked Brand. It's awesome. And it's done by an agency. It's about 50 minutes long. <clears throat> and the whole point of it is, if you build a great product and service, marketing takes care of itself. If you're kind of halfway doing what your product's supposed to do, you got to do all this junk. And because of social media, people talk. So let's say my wife, you know, we have a leak in our house and she'll go on Facebook. So who's a good plumber to call? You know, I mean, a lot of people do that, right? If you have a good plumbing service and the guy puts on the little white booties and walks in and is nice to your kid and tells you, you know, I saw this other problem you have that you didn't know about, or I'll take care of this on the side and I'm not going to charge you. You're going to say, hey, that, that was a great experience. And so social media is very tied to are you good at what you do? And it can make you successful or not. So for a marketer, I only care about two things. Um, what's the cost per lead and is it gonna convert? Social media, that's not so great. Um, some people would argue that it is, but I've had 400 clients looked in their Google Analytics. I have a client, um, Southwest Greens, that makes backyard putting greens and chipping things and artificial turf. They pay an agency $10,000 a month to do a Facebook page with 25,000 people on Facebook called the Backyard Lawn or Party, the Backyard Lawn Party. 25,000 likes, never a single conversion to their website to fill out a form and say, hey, I'd like to install a backyard green or turf. I'm sorry, this is about social media and I'm mildly skeptical about the conversion part of it, but I think the engagement part of it is really a big deal. So for me, I'm, bi I'm cont content biased. So for me, social media is about content amplification. It's creating, publishing, promoting content on social media, monitoring it, and analyzing the results. So this is less, this first part is a little less about social media than it is about life. Because I think, in my experience, most people fail at social media. So how come? Well, one, there's a whole lot of stuff we don't know about our business, about our customers, about why we're successful. You know, there's this thing called big data now. And I have clients that can slice and dice massive amounts of visitors and really figure out who's coming, why they're coming, what they do, how long they stay, all this stuff. Um, by demographic, age, whatever. Um, data is really important and understanding, you know, how you can get better at this, to me is a really big deal. <clears throat> so, readers are leaders. There's a great book called Traction. If you have a company and, and you're a, a manager of a social media department, I recommend you read this. And basically, to summarize it really fast, it's, it's about these quarterly meetings or these quarterly sprints where you say for the next 90 days, here's what we're gonna do. And if you meet in January 1st and you follow up March 31st, and you say, how'd everybody do? Nobody's gonna have accomplished their goals. But if you create a meeting rhythm where you talk once a week and you say, hey, how's that coming? Did you work on that? Um, you'd be surprised at the results. So a couple quotes from the book, the ability to create accountability and discipline and then execute in the area of greatest weakness and then execute is the biggest weakness for most companies. Execution is a big weakness. Everybody can develop a social media strategy. Go to Google, how do I write a social media strategy? You're done. But then actually getting it done the next 365 days is hard. There's an entrepreneur here in Atlanta, uh, David Cummings, that started the Atlanta Tech Village. Um, he's a little introverted, uh, super uber smart. He blogs every day because he wants to. He sold part out for $90 million. He doesn't need to block. He does it because he likes it. He talks about sales and all this stuff, and he's a really smart guy. But most people aren't wired that way. 
most people you know, have a plan and they fail to execute. So then the second quote is, more is lost by indecision than the wrong decision. So just go do it is the point of social media. The other book that I would encourage you to read if execution is something that's one of your hot buttons because it is for me, is The Four Disciplines of Execution. Focus on the things that are wildly important. Act on lead measure. So in marketing, there's leading and lagging KPIs. And I think it took me 10 years to learn this, but it's really important. Leading KPIs are things you can control. So in my business, I get business from going to networking events, speaking, um, playing golf, walking around and being nice to people. Not very strategic, but that's how we get business. Uh, publishing blog posts, maybe. Um, doing a video, maybe. The lagging KPIs, I can't control. They're the outcomes of that activity. So how my website ranks, how many people um, click on an email, uh, the number of leads that come into my website, the number of sales I close. So what I think happens in marketing is that people focus on a lot of the lagging stuff, which you can't control. That's the outcome. The question is, how many blog posts are you doing? How many videos are you putting up? How many online influencers are you networking with every day? Um, that you can control, which drives the lagging KPIs of the outcome. So how, what that has to do with this book, I have no idea. But um, so I used to use Feedly to read a bunch of blogs. Now I use um, Flipboard. And it's just a magazine thing. I sit on my iPad and I watch TV and talk to my wife. So I'm doing three things, having quality time in front of the television on my iPad, you know, but that's how I learn. And on, I'm really good at what I do and I close people because I know what I'm talking about and it's because of that. If you want to get good at social media, you got to read. So I Googled top 10 social media blogs. Everybody has their uh, point of view of what the best are, right? But if you don't read blogs on social media, you're not going to get any better at this. And those might not be the best top 10. It's someone's opinion. But the point is, readers are leaders. If you want to be good at this stuff, you got to... I, I used, I'm a pack rat. So I'd take these things back in 2002 and throw them in a box, papers I'd read. And I'd send clients notebook this big. Hey, we did all this research and here's what we learned. I was a paper person back in the beginning. And I'd go back three years later and everything I read I'd throw away because it what didn't apply anymore. My daughter went to Tulane. They said, she's a freshman orientation. They said, what you learn your freshman, sophomore year will not be relevant your senior year. It, things change so fast in most industries because of technology. So the point is, if you're not going to keep up, you need to do a different game, not social media. Um, my favorite person on the entire planet is Tony Robbins. Went to a thing called Business Mastery. <clears throat> um, five days, 14 hours a day, $12,000. Steve Wynn spoke. The Virgin Atlantic guy spoke. The CEO of Zappos spoke. And he talks about the psychology of getting stuff done, right? And one of his is, you know, the path to success is to take massive action. That's kind of obvious. Then I found another quote. In life, lots of people know what to do, but very few people actually do what they know. And that is true for all of us. I know how to eat right. I know how to get up and walk. I know how to feel better, um, but I don't do it because I'm busy. That's my excuse. That's my psychology. If you're going to do social media, you have to execute because it's, it's a conversation you're having every day. In business, one of the things that just hit me right between the nose is I, I have an MBA. I like to write really long marketing plans, show you how smart I am. He says, complexity is the enemy of execution. You should be able to write a social media plan in two pages. Hey, we're going to do Facebook. Here are our goals. Here are the activities we're going to do. Here's how we're going to measure success. If you make it more complex than that, like this, this is a content messaging map 
of all the different resources, the topics, the unique selling proposition, the value drivers, the differentiation, and you actually have to read these color codes. Is that a blog, a web page? Marketing agencies create this so that a client goes, wow, you're really smart. That's complicated. I'm willing to pay you $10,000 a month to manage my social media because I don't want to do that. That isn't what it has to be. All right, culture is really important on execution. Um, if I say we need to work really hard and then I come in, you know, hung over on Monday morning at 1030 every Monday or I, don't, I play golf every Friday and I don't come to the office, your team is not going to be as juiced up as you are. That's the reality of culture. This is actually MailChimp, by the way. Um, project management, keep it simple. So I use a couple tools. Um, need to pay attention to how much time. Um, I use a couple tools. So one is I've discovered that I'm a visual person. I like to see things. Um, so I use Trello to drag and drop topic ideas for blogs or search into marketing or social media and you know put it in is that an idea something I need to do research or is that something somebody's executing right now um, Evernote is really awesome but you got to learn how to use it because otherwise it's not very awesome I mean there's lots of cool ways you can take a web page take a snapshot of it throw it in Evernote and if that web page goes away you still have a copy of it um, you can email it to yourself you can email it to a notebook. It automatically goes in there. Um, there's 50 things you can do with Evernote. And the reason people are fanatical about Evernote is they, they actually learned how to use it. And it takes a couple of weeks to get used to using Evernote. Um, Basecamp is a really popular project management tool. I like Asana um, because it's more simple. Uh, it's free. And again, we're going back to execution. If you ask someone on your team or it's your job, hey, could you do a Facebook post? You know, or we, if you're sitting in a meeting, we need to do more Facebook posts. That's not going to get done. So you need to have a person's name, a date, uh, attached to everything. Um, to doist, if you're, I thought we'd have some students because there's a lot of students here, but you need to be really good at your own to-do list. I love to doist. Um, some people are notebook people, but social media is about keeping track of a lot of different things. So social media 101. It's social media is a part of a bigger picture, right? Um, but you notice it says podcasts, blogs, videos. That's all content. Social media is content amplification. And then networking, I've been doing this 15 years. I've never said, hey, um, I notice you do marketing for Home Depot. I know we've never met, but I thought, Maybe you'd like to talk. We want to come in and do your marketing for you. That doesn't work. Now, if someone refers me, they check me out on LinkedIn, see who I know, we have something in common. Social networking is hard. And it takes time and effort, and very few people do it well. Then there's, as you can tell, I'm kind of a, a visual image person. Then there's, you know, what's the big picture? So like we talked about, there's networking, there's social sites, but it's mostly about content. And without great content, no one's going to engage with your business. Um, so what are the seven, the blog is the hub of, of some of the case studies I'm going to show you for B2C and B2B social media. Um, what, what's blogging about? It's, be yourself. You have to have a personality online. Are you funny? Are you edgy? Are you condescending? What are you? Um, learn from others, you know, wa watch other people that are really good at this, like Seth Godin. Um, organize your approach. What are, you know, David Cummings writes a blog every day. Maybe on Sunday nights he sits down and writes four of them because he knows four days he's going to be busy and the other three waits till inspiration inspires him and he does it. You have to have a methodology in social media. Um, there's lots of tools. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Um, I'm a tool nut. But they do you no good if you just log into the account, use them a little bit, and never go back. Um, it's better to have fewer tools. you got to get attention, obviously, with good content, um, evoke emotion, and then learn to repackage and reuse content. Um, eh, 
that's just kind of the, the funnel uh, of content distribution and how it goes from broad to more targeted people that are interested in your business. So Comcast, do they care about me? I'm an existing customer in social media. Probably not. They want the guy that has direct dish to learn about them in social media. So it, it's important to understand you know, who you're going after. And this is kind of 101 stuff, so I'm going to go through it a little quick. You know, the first thing you got to think about is what are my time, resources, and who's the audience, and, and what are the demographics? Can you chop them up into different groups? There's advanced users, there's new people, there's someone that doesn't know anything. So, like, marketing automation is a big thing now. You know, drip marketing to people. Some people don't know what that is. So your strategy has to address the needs of, of groups. Um, obviously the branding, you know, I don't care who you are, I've been doing this a long time. Very few mid-size and small companies, if you took all their marketing stuff and put it on a conference table and screenshots of their website and their social media, it would look like a ransom note. It doesn't look like it's branded like, you know, good big companies. And that's actually easy to do. You only got to do some cover photos and you know, make your website kind of sync up and use the same imagery, but very few people take the time to do it. You can go on 99 designs and get anything you want done for a hundred bucks. I mean, the, the web has made this so easy. So one of the things I'm a big fan of, and I won't spend too much time on this, is questions are really important. If you ask the right questions, you get to the right answers, the right strategy. So I'm always looking for social media strategy questions, marketing strategy questions. We have an 88 question marketing kickoff questionnaire. What's the value of a lead? How much are you willing to pay to generate one? Are there different types of leads? How long is the closed sales cycle? There's a, there's a bunch of social media questions. You know, who's your target customer? What's the call to action? What are the different types of conversions? How do you engage? You know, so I think you have to ask yourself a lot of questions at the beginning and, and understand what your mission statement is and what your tone is for your audience. Are you gonna be funny? How are you gonna stand out? You know, again, I've beat content to death, but you know, it, it's, it, it's the timing and frequency that's important. There are blogs that on Wednesday at two o'clock, every Wednesday it comes out. Um, that's kind of a big deal if you want people to follow you and pay attention. If you do it when you're in the mood, no one's gonna pay attention. I don't really watch People Magazine or that kind of stuff, but I saw Perez Hilton one day, they asked him, how did you get famous and all the other people that talk about celebrities didn't. He goes, I blog 96 times a day when I started. If you do it once a week, no one's gonna follow you. Um, so what's the frequency? This is someone's opinion. You know, there's Google, you can look it up. B2B frequency of Facebook posts versus Twitter. I assure you someone's written about that. Um, timing, what time of day? This is, you know, Facebook 1 to 4 p.m. because people you know, they hit their burnout, they've been to lunch, now they're gonna go on Facebook and see what their friends have posted today. Makes sense, you know? Um, so there's time to post. I already talked about the one-page marketing plan, two-page marketing plan. If you look it up online, one-page social media plan, marketing plan, it's there. And it's really simple questions. It isn't this complicated, you already know that. <clears throat> so what does a really simple strategy look like? Choose two to three networks. You, you know, if you go on to knowem.com, there's like 5,000 networks that you can reserve your name under. Um, but it's choose two to three networks, update your profiles and cover photos so you don't look like a ransom note. Um, decide on the types of content you're gonna publish. Are you gonna do eBooks? Are you gonna do videos? Are you just gonna blog? Are you gonna tweet and that's it? Um, find your voice and your tone that, that people get. Um, you know, decide on your frequency, measure, analyze, Google Analytics, I'll show you a couple screenshots. It's pretty easy to measure stuff. Automate, there's tools I'll show you like IFTT. If this, then this, you know, it automates different tasks. Um, social media, there's all kinds of tools that, to make it pretty easy. Um, but it's really about engagement and reaching out to real people. There's data and it's the Pew Report, P-E-W that talks about the different demographics for Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, all of them. And it has data on demographics and how old they are so you can create a plan to decide if that's what you want to do. Um, voice and tone, you know, I think it's actually a complicated subject and I would just go to Google and read a lot about it so that you can 
create that one page. Pretend a copywriter or a PR person or a marketing person joins your company. I'm always fascinated that no one has an institutional knowledge document that says, here's how we do things, here's what we say, here's what we don't say. I say stuff like, um, we're business people first and marketing geeks second. Should my sales guy say that? Maybe. That's what I say. My elevator pitch. If I tell you, if I introduce myself and I have one minute to do it, does my sales guy come behind me and say the exact same thing? Probably not. And should he? Probably so. So for me, voice and tone and institutional knowledge about your key messages is a really big deal that most companies fail at. Um, I always go meet with a CEO and you know, pitch him and I say, you know, do people say the same thing that you would say? And they're always like, oh yeah. I'm like, okay, $100 lunch at Bones, we leave in 30 minutes, go get your sales guy. See if he says what you just told me. Never happens. Um, MailChimp, so thinking about tone and voice. You know, fun but not childish, clever but not silly, confident but not cocky, smart but not stodgy, cool but not alienating. You know, that they have different programs for little sheep, horses, and elephants. You know, enterprise level email marketing or small business email marketing. And they use those little characters when, when you're on the page. And what I like about this, although it's small, I'm sorry, you can't really see it. But if you're a little sheep, you're an entrepreneur. You have a solo business. You're, you're making 200 grand a year and you're trying to get it going and you're using a little social media and email. That conversation is different than Home Depot. And you got to segment your social media and your content based on the audience. The headlines are really important in social media. So there's, there's some headline tools out there that you can use. This is one of them I took a screenshot of. How to start and optimize your first YouTube campaign. How to create your first profitable YouTube campaign. What I learned after wasting $50,000 on YouTube. That one that's highlighted in red had over a thousand percent more conversions than that. And, and in WordPress, you can rotate the headlines to see who engages with it. And if you think about, if I'm on Flipboard, I'm scanning headlines. What's gonna grab my attention? So that is the secret sauce of social media, in my opinion, is if you can write really good headlines, and most people just write over it. Um, tools, there's these things called Lumascapes that show all the tools in marketing, and they're crazy. There's thousands of them, and it's very confusing to all of us, right? So social media, you know, there's, there's analytics social media, there's paid promotion, there's social media managing your accounts. It's a complicated universe, so don't be intimidated by it. <clears throat> On my Chrome browser, we do a bunch of different stuff, right? We do um, SEO, local SEO, content marketing, paid search, social media, email, design, video, web development, reporting. So I have this little thing that here are all the sites I use the most for social media. It's a way to stay organized because I'll inevitably go, oh, I should go on IFTT for that client and set up this, you know, or whatever. So that's how I keep organized. There's Hootsuite if you're a small business, you're starting out, it's not a bad tool. If you have a little bit of money, Sprout Social is pretty good. If you're big time and you know you have a big company, you know Radian Six is pretty cool. Um, you know, there's other tools, and this list could be thousands. There's one. If you search social media tools, there's definitely a top 100 list. Um, Buffer, IFTT, Noam. There's a hundred Chrome plugins. There's a social image maker to size the photo right instantly. There's Bitly to track how many people click on your article and go to the landing page. So analytics is a really big deal. So I have a client that does concerts 12 times a year. It's a really fun business. So social media, you would think for music people is a really big deal. And their analytics says that 12% of their website visitors come from social media and they put a lot into it. That's Toby, I'm sorry for saying this. That's the high side of social media for me. 12% is a lot. Um, Toby's really good at social media, probably better than I am, so if you want to talk to her after this, you can too. But um, 
I don't. I go into everyone's analytics, and I rarely see it at 12 percent. The other thing you can measure is how many people book the concert. Where did they come from? So, you know, Facebook had 217 conversions out of 4,000, and this is a social media kind of business: music concerts and events for young single people. If you're a B2B software company, it's going to be smaller than that. So. That's the reality I think I live in. Okay, so um, B2B is a little bit different than B2C, obviously. Um, you know, under B2B, you want to increase brand awareness, humanize your B2B company. Very few of them do it well. On B2C, it's a lot easier. Um, establish a company thought leader. I went into a law firm that has 106 partners. 900 lawyers, four locations across the country. They're trial lawyers and they have 27 different practices and spend gabillions. I mean, I mean, one case is worth five million bucks to them. So they're afraid of social media. That out of 120 partners, no one's gonna make time to write anything. And we don't wanna write anything that's not true because we're lawyers. So they run from social media. Social media is not for everybody. Uh, we used to work with Choice Point that got bought by LexisNexis. They didn't want to write anything because they're a data business. They have everybody's personal information. Um, social media only fits for certain kind of B2B people. A lot of technology companies use it. Um, but you got to find a thought leader in the company that's willing to be the voice. And that's really hard for a lot of companies. Connect with prospects, clients, and influencers and increase the conversion rate. Um, too much data, but it's basically, you know, why, what's the difference between B2B and B2C marketers? You know, the B2B sales cycle is usually longer than B2C. I think researching those differences will give you an idea of what's done well. So I tried to find some examples of stuff that I pay attention to sometimes. Um, follow so open forum has a really good small business blog I'm sorry American Express open forum um, and, and they're trying to you know 90% of the businesses in America make less than a million bucks a year so they're trying to create content that says oh that's really good information you know I've been meaning to get that MX card so I can get sky miles or whatever there's a connection there and an audience there that they're trying to tap into HubSpot Wow, if you follow HubSpot, man, they're really good. They drip market ebooks and videos and awesome content about marketing. They also borrowed or got $500 million from a venture capitalist and have 80 people in the content development department. So it's really intimidating to get content from them and go, how are we ever going to do that? You're not. Because none of us are going to go borrow $500 million. But think about it, you know, they have different blogs. They have a marketing blog, a sales blog, an agency blog. <laughs> I mean, it goes on and on, right? And, and they're trying to segment their audience. So if you're an agency, we can white label our tool, throw your logo on it, and it looks like you do it. Their conference that I went to with a gabillion people was all agencies reselling HubSpot. Um, and they're making money off it. Uh, so I think that's a really big deal. Unbounce has some really good content. If you're into social media, you know, landing pages and calls to action are a really big deal. Um, they, they have 80 page PDFs on how to, what converts better. And as an agency, I read that and share it with my team and make them read it and screen capture it. And, you know, it, they want me to buy their tool for my clients. They don't care that I'm reading their blog or watching their video, but they know that if I keep seeing really good stuff from them, I extend that thought leadership credibility to their product and go, wow, their content's amazing, their product must be amazing, and the companies that do this well win. If, you know, let's say we all start a social media platform and you and I start out with six pages that say, here are the 10 reasons our software is so great. And here's some screenshots, and here's our contact us page, and our about us page, and here's a funny video. And then, 
company A stops. And company B says, we want to be HubSpot. We're going to write a bunch of content about social media and marketing and blah, 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 blah. Who do you think is going to win? It's the company that writes a bunch of content. Google's algorithm used to be based on how many other people link to your website, and that was it. That was 90% of the ranking. Now it's based on whose website has more content, deep content, not short content, how many people follow you on social media, how long do they stay on your website, what pages do they visit. It's about providing great content, which in social media is nothing but amplifying that great content. Um, Unbounce, they have really good, the hardest thing to write is the sentence I have circled, you know, um, what's your blog about? I can't write about a blog about marketing and expect any of you guys to follow it. I have a friend, um, Jason Swink, that wrote a blog, writes a blog called, uh, you know, that, that's focused on agency business development. If you're a biz dev guy for an agency, read my blog. That's niche enough. Marketing or searching and marketing or social media is not niche. So their niche is expert advice to help you crush your next online marketing campaign. Sign up to get the latest conversion tips delivered straight to your email. That's a pretty good elevator pitch. And when you're writing content, you have to think, if I have one sentence to tell someone what we do, build, publish, and A-B test landing pages without IT. You don't have to know programming. That's really good. And our businesses, we skip right, yeah, we're gonna blog, my social media dude said it, we needed to do that. You gotta think about what what's the niche we're gonna pick that we can own that no one else will own. And once we've done this, three years from now, the competition won't be able to catch up. So the other thing I found really interesting about Unbounce is they put get in touch at the bottom of their website, Twitter and Facebook. Normally it's the top right-hand corner. I, I, I thought that was really interesting for someone that's into, bless you, that's into conversion. Um, and they have clear calls to action right at the top of their page, obviously. There's a great guy named Michael Hyatt. And I circled work with me because that's what we all want. Buy my stuff, work with me, hire me, give me your money. You gotta have that button on your website. Um, he has a really good elevator pitch too. He's a coach, he's a speaker, he's a writer. Um, your virtual mentor, when it works, succeed at life. You know, it's kinda fluffy, but it, it's, it's like, oh, it's virtual, it's a little hands off, then he has a call to action to do something. These are probably hard to see, but I always find the plug-in of the most popular blog posts interesting of the blogs I read. What are people actually following? Because if I gave you a list of 20 blog posts on your blog, I know you couldn't guess what's most popular unless you had a tool to tell you that these are the pages that get visited the most or shared the most or linked to the most. It's hard to tell. We never know. So social media is about testing. It's about trying new things. It's about trying to connect with people and write really good content. One way to do that is to look at your competitors in depth and reverse engineer what they're doing. You'll get really good ideas. This is a creative process. Um, Hootsuite obviously is a tool for social media, but the popular resources, case studies, what they call hoot guides, you know, white papers, webinars, uh, a content social media audit with a cool graphic that stands out. That's how you get people to care about your brand at all. If it just said Hootsuite, $99 a month, manage your social media, you might not try it. Um, duct Tape Marketing is a cool marketing guy. He writes a bunch of stuff. He does public speaking. You know, but on his homepage, he says right out of the gate, you know, are you a marketing consultant or a small business owner? Because those are two different people with two different problems. He has calls to action. Hire me to speak at an event. He would not come here for free. Um, I, Bruce Clay is probably one of the, a very successful SEO guy. Back in the 90s or early 2000s, everybody knew who he was. And 
it always frustrates me. How does a guy like that get to become a rock star? He's a geek. And he told me, I drove him back to the airport from a conference, and he said, well, one day I made this drawing, and I remember it, of how the search engines work. When you're on Google, it pulled results from AOL and Lycos and 900 other um, search engines, because there used to be 900 search engines. Now there's three. So he would redraw it and update you on how search engines work, and every SEO person would show their client that drawing. Here's how SEO works, you know? And he got 90,000 links to that drawing. And that's how you rank number one in Google. So he charges $40,000 a month for SEO consulting. He charges to come speak. Um, he doesn't even work at his agency. All he does is get paid to speak off of a drawing. Without that drawing, no one would know who he is. Content pays the bills. Um, this guy, the duct tape marketing guy, is trying to sell ebooks, podcasts, webinars. He's trying to sell books. That's why he does all this content writing. He wants you to buy his books and hire him as a speaker. We all have goals. Um, I hope this met your expectations. I got a few minutes, 12 minutes for questions if you want to ask questions. I have lots of stories. You're welcome to call me or email me. Um, any specific questions about social media? Yes. Yeah. And I agree a thousand percent. Social media is really not about conversion um, for most businesses. Uh, I think it's about a competitive advantage. If um, you know you invest a lot in it and you get followers and people pay attention to what you're doing, it's really hard for a competitor to catch up once you've spent a couple years doing that, and that's. Competitive advantage is hard to come by. Anybody can get a VC and create software and sell a product. Um, it, it's hard to be the unbounce of landing page software now because they're so well known. Um, I, I do think you're right, and and you know I'm not meaning to slam on social media at all, but it's because biz marketing is not just about conversions and leads. It's about what your brand stands for and why you're different and better. Um, I'm just not the type of person that's going to blog every day, so we kind of fake it um, on our blog, and it's it's not very good. I bet it hadn't been updated in a while, but if something strikes me, I'll sit down and write it. But I don't get my leads from the web, right? I get my leads from walking around and being nice to people. That's at least what I say, because um, they'll say, "Call Wadi. He's the search engine guy. I met him a couple years ago. They're good at what they do," and people call. Or clients leave and they go work another job. Social media um, takes execution, and you can't you can't set your boss up to say we're going to get rich from social media. In my opinion, um, you, if you do really good at content marketing, maybe you'll do better than you would. Tweeting is not going to make you rich. I always say if we took the celebrities, politicians, and inactive and musicians and inactive users off of Twitter. Who would be left? Because all us marketing people are tweeting to each other because we're into it, right? We want to prove that we know, this is great stuff. You should pay me to do it and see how well it works. Um, but if we took all the marketing people, all the celebrities, all the politicians off, would it be that big? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to slam social media. Um, are there other questions? Yes, ma'am. What, what are your thoughts on the way that Twitter's going to 
so there's a guy named Joel Lundfeld that used to run Moxie Interactive. He left here and run a strategy for Twitter. Um, you know, Facebook is kicking their butt. Uh, and I think, you know, anytime you change a platform that much, I think it's dangerous in my opinion. Um, but, you know, Facebook keeps changing and they just pick the right stuff, right? You know, they, they make good decisions. Um, like I said before, you know, two years from now, everything you know about social media today will probably be different. Um, I was at a friend's house and this guy was, band guy was singing and his girlfriend was periscoping him on Twitter and his followers were watching him, I guess. I don't know how many people. Um, I, I, I think succinct, simplicity messages, you know, remember complexity is the enemy of execution. I think the longer is not better for Twitter, in my opinion. Um, but I don't know anything or I'd be rich and we wouldn't have met. I'd be playing golf. Um, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's hard to say, but they have to try something because what's happened to all businesses is you get to kind of your size that you're going to be and you have to innovate to get bigger. And that's what they're doing. Um, I, I certainly don't know, or they would pay me for advice and they don't. So. Any other questions about execution or social media or best practices or how you can do a plan? Okay, thank you guys for your time today. I hope you enjoy the conference.